Hey folks, it's Jim. Good morning. Uh, having some coffee. I have to get up early in the morning this time of year to get my things done, but now I'm on a break, so I was going to make a video. Um, just wanted to continue on with shelter. Uh, you don't have to build what I built, okay? Some people had some building questions. Don't worry about what I'm building. The shed I'm building has to be shaped like a bullet, and it's, okay, because it's going to go through. It can't have any eaves or anything, no overhang. Everything's tight, no trim work on this. Everything had to be built in, all right? And I don't have time to explain all that to you. You can just build a basic shed, even with a slant roof, if you want for your shelter, okay? It's really easy. Just look up basic shed designs online. You don't need to worry about the details I put into the roof system. Okay, there are two more pieces that aren't even in yet uh, that when it's done you'll see that creates more storage space for him at the same time, stiffens the rafters and ties it all together so this thing can take the beating of limbs as he goes down an old logging road at 20 miles an hour that's overgrown because that has been uh, used for logging in 20, 30 years and uh, at the same time um, it will be beat by limbs, okay? So you don't have to design your shed the way this is being built, okay? So don't worry about all the different uh, tricks up top, all right? Just build a standard shed with overhangs. You're going to want eaves anyway because you want dripping off. He needs a bullet going down the road. And this guy is the same guy who's building, digging my foundation for me on my new house. So it's trade, trade, okay? And he's putting in my my septic tank and uh, leach field and everything. So, uh, and he's a friend of mine and he's using this to go way up north towards Canada and places that other people don't go for uh, bear. All right, and he doesn't need it till next year so I could test the fasteners. It was a win-win for me and it's a win for him. And he can dig me, uh, do all the work that I need in about a day and a half. So he wins too, it's trade, trade. You don't have to build like this. This is a custom job, extremely custom for a specific need of a person who's going to a specific location, okay? And uh, we'll stay there because he's leased the land as well. It would take him six months to clear the limbs to haul a building in there. Uh, it's not worth it to him. It would cost him more money to do the clearing work on the road than it would, than it is for me just to simply modify and uh, give him a special order on this. So don't worry about it. Um, just build the standard shed. Get your plans off Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever you want. Okay. Um, uh, the portable power station. Um, I don't think I explained it. The box is on casters, so it simply can swivel side to side just by pushing it. Okay. So all you have to do when you leave your shed, just push it, and that's how you track the sun. I don't think I was clear about that. The angle on top that's on the swivels, okay, is the pivot. Okay, the pivot piece, that only has to be adjusted four times a year to get the proper angle of the sun as it tracks on the horizon. Daily, all you have to do is go out and push the box 10 degrees, 15 degrees ahead of the sun. So it'll give you two to four hours of perfect tracking depending on uh, where you are and what time of year it is. You may only want to go 10 degrees or five degrees ahead of the sun if you're deep in winter because you're only gonna push it twice that much, uh, two times in a day anyway um, and the sun's going to track fast. Up here we only get about uh, five hours of good sun in the winter, okay? But then in the morning return the power station to the morning rise where your sun rises, okay? And then get up and push it into your normal position, okay? And then push it again for your afternoon evening position and it's really that simple. It only takes a minute to push the box because it's on wheels. That's why I do it this way, okay? Or you don't even have to put wheels on it, just pull the box and it will turn the panels right into the sun. It's very simple to do. So uh, that was something a question and I'm sorry that the video wasn't that good. But again, it was my first time using the portable camera. So I was kind of, uh, I don't know, obviously I'm not good at this, <laughs> right? But I'm trying to get better. So bear with me, okay? Um, so on the portable step power station, that's it. The other thing about the portable power station, it seems like, okay, this is about, this is a, a fairly um, expensive box, okay, when it's all done uh, for the average person. I salvaged my batteries off of ships who only can use a battery for international law for two years. So I get a perfectly good battery, 250 amp hour, really cheap. Uh, you may not have that ability. 
Um, so, but if you were to do everything retail, the solar, your inverter, your charger, and everything, it's going to cost you about a thousand dollars. Okay, build your own box, obviously, but it's going to cost you about a thousand dollars for that solar project. But here's the thing, folks. Okay, that power station you can bring home and you run your refrigerator or something else. Take something in your home off grid all year long, utilizing that power station, so it's always operational. You want your batteries to be utilized anyway and fully charged. So and with a 250 amp hour battery, I can run this refrigerator uh, for two days, all right, off of and without uh, any charging to it. But the point I'm trying to make is your situation can be different. But the point is, utilize it in your home. Here's the thing. My friend John last year, he doesn't have solar. He spent $800 in gasoline about there in 10 days of power outage running his generator okay to power his home uh, it was between six and eight hundred I can't remember so one major power outage depending on where you live this thing can pretty much uh, begin to pay for itself rather quickly and that's why I like the portable power station it is a portable generator now it won't run your house but it will save you money all year long if you set up a couple of items in your home to run off of it. So it's never down. It goes from camp back to my house. Now the one I just showed, mine isn't here now. It's up to camp because I have some things that need to stay charged. Uh, some tools up there that I'm working. Uh, so mine's back to camp. But normally it'll be here running my refrigerator and my pellet stove during the winter. Okay, all winter long. Those two items are off grid. Okay. So think about that too, what the portable power station can be used for. It can be used in your home too to run different items. Okay, fire safety. When you build this shed, okay, the fire goes at the back. Your wood stove, your four dog stove, whatever you're going to use, your sheep herder, whatever goes at the back of the shed. And the reason why is you never want fire between you and the exit, okay? Always remember that when you're building a micro uh, device uh, shelter of any kind. Never fire between you and the exit. Most micro shelters only have one exit. Never between you and the exit. Okay, I've said it three times, all right? All right, that's for safety. Safety, safety, safety. Always safety first, okay? Uh, the four dog stove also, there's a titanium version that he builds. This is why I love this product. This guy is, was foreign legion. He's had to have survived 30, survived 30 below as I have and many others and have been trained. And boy, you love this stove once you've had to do that. Because it gives you a four to six hour burn time on hardwoods, which means you can sleep if you're alone on an expedition, okay? Now, most of you will never do that. But many of us have had to do it and do do it. And trust me, you want a four to six hour burn time on hardwoods so you can get some sleep and not worry about your fire. You just throw some more wood in it and it's stoked back up when you get up, okay? So that's one thing. But anyway, the titanium version only weighs 12 pounds. The standard version, fully loaded with the a water jacket, which gives you four gallons of hot water. So when you get up, you got coffee ready to go. Um, uh, it has side shelves and everything. So you can, after you're done cooking, you can just move your stuff off to the side and warm it. Say you got a stew or something you made, just move it off to the side. It'll keep it warm while you're out doing your work. And you come back, you got hot stew all ready to go for yourself, right? So there's a lot of things to think about. That's why I recommend the Four Dog Stove. He's actually someone who's actually had to survive and knows what he's talking about. Okay? So watch his videos. See why I recommend it. And you may find that you like it too. Sheep Herder does the same thing. Uh, and it's inexpensive and a good product as well. Okay. Just wanted to share those things. Um, Pecan Corner is a new person who just... I uh, just... Uh, uh, got on her channel and she does great food stuff uh, but she shares an experience leaving Katrina where she was in a rural area but the evacuation of Katrina how much like locusts people just devoured and consumed everything as they exited uh, those other areas that were affected and she described the driving conditions how they had to change their route several times watch her video great information excellent example of do not choose main roads in an emergency disaster situation you ain't getting out you're going nowhere you're going to be sitting in traffic for a long time and by the time you get to a gas station there may need be no gas there okay so choose rural routes that's what I 
Now her video is excellent. Her husband did a great job getting them out of there. Anyway, great example. Um, end phase. I wanted to share a little bit more about the end phase inverters, why I use them on my grid tie system at my city house, which is where I was making that video from. Um, which you can see it's rural. I call it my city house because it's actually close to the amenities of cities. Um, uh, end phase is, it talks to my power grid in the house, okay, and then it goes online all right, and then I can I can monitor my system from anywhere in the world. I can see what my system is doing, and I can also do that for others who ask me, can I go, can I see what's up with their system? I can go online, look at their system, and tell them what's happening or what's going on. Why one panel may be less than another, and most of the time it's because some bird crapped on it, or uh, they've got a, a bunch of leaves on it, or something like that, and that's why that panel's operating less because. I haven't found any failures yet with my personal experience with Enphase and the panels that I use. Uh, I'll get into that in other videos and why I use certain panels. Okay, uh, also back to the portable power station. Monocrystalline only. I recommend you go to a company called Renog. You can find them on Amazon or go to Renog.com yourself. Renog, R-E-N-O-G-Y. Okay, they make a really strong, thick, uh, frame, thickly framed uh, monocrystalline solar panel. Why do you want monocrystalline? Because in low light situations, monocrystalline performs better in overcast and shaded situations, whereas polycrystalline performs well in uh, bright sunny days. Okay? Different applications. I run poly on my home system that's grid tie and the city house. I run mono on the portable power station. Mono crystalline is your better application for the portable power station. Renogy also has simple 200 watt, 300 watt, 400 watt, 600 watt, 800 watt kits you can buy with the charge controller, which is a PWM. You can upgrade to an MPPT, which I recommend. MPPT will maximize the efficiency of your panels as well. So study that, know the difference. Um, and just get what you need, okay? But anyway, a 200 watt solar system from them is like 327 bucks with everything you need, okay? So um, uh, anyway, go on. Um, so Enphase is really good for that application. I can analyze anybody's solar system who's on Enphase from anywhere in the world, which is really nice. Um, and yet I find no fal failures. Usually it's something they haven't gone out and actually looked at their panels and discovered why something's happened. That's why I recommend putting your panels on the ground, okay? You can actually clean them, whereas if they're on your roof, have fun with that. But anyway, a lot of people don't think that through about solar. They have some big company come in and install everything for them, and then they're saying, oh, the birds have been crapping on them for six weeks, and now they're not working very well anymore. How am I going to get up there to clean it? Next thing you know, you're on your roof. <laughs> every day scraping poop off your panels, okay, depending on where you live. Again, situational awareness. Just think things through, okay? But I wanted to share now uh, one more thing about Enphase. The company has paid for all of my solar stuff, not because they love me, because I invested in the company. Once I Remember, I've been doing my systems for a long time and have slowly led into Enphase and upgraded to end phase, okay? That system you saw has been out there for over two years. Invested in the company, the stock doubled, I sold it because I knew it got way ahead of itself. Uh, they don't do what the street people want, so the stock went back down, but yet its revenues were doubling, so I knew to buy the stock again, it's already back up for me. They have more than paid for all my solar work. So like Jimmy Rant says, Jimmy Rant says, use your prepper sense, folks. You may be onto something with a great company and you're way ahead of the curve. You may be able to profit greatly from it. So think it through. As preppers, we see a lot of things. Most people don't. Okay? Think about it. Now, I wanted to share, too, in one of my videos, some people were talking about, oh, domestic pets, we're going to survive. I want to share a tragic story for you. One of the villages over in the Middle East uh, that was cut off by what's going on over there uh, when finally the rescue people got there to help the village, all of the domestic pets were eaten, okay? The first thing to be eaten in a major disaster will be domestic pets. Don't forget it. 
Experience, strength, and hope. Jim out.